Welcome back guys. What's going on? We're going to be doing the artifacts and the lands in our Rivals of Ixalan set review today. So I uh, appreciate you appreciate you joining us here. Be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the content. And uh, today we're going to start with Awakened Amalgam. Also, if you guys haven't done so, be sure to head, head over to Twitch and you can follow and subscribe there too to check out live streams as well, which, uh, which would be great. We have a good time. Uh, four mana for a star star. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of different named lands you control. This card's pretty interesting at most it's going to be a 4-4 on turn four presuming you haven't ramped at all um but i mean the sky's the limit i think like you could have literally 10 different land types in your in play when this when this is a uh, you know on turn 10 i don't think that's very good though i don't think i just want to play a a, a 10 10 on turn 10 like it, it, it best case scenario is this scales proportionally right so on turn seven it's a seven seven on turn eight it's an eight eight and that's if you have eight different land types, seven different land types, you know, whatever. Um, I don't think that's great. And this probably shouldn't be a rare. Like, even in limited, like, this is probably going to be a 3-3 three, three for four most of the time. Uh, in draft, it's most likely going to be a 2-2. Two, two. It's basically unplayable in limited, I think. Um, but in constructed, I think it's also still pretty bad. Azores Gateway. Two mana for a mythic, uh, legendary artifact, so don't be playing more than one of these. Draw a card for one mana, then exile a card from your hand. So draw a card, put a card over here. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with gateway, so I can exile a one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, five drop, let's say. You gain five life, untap it, and transform it. Okay, so I go up to five, I go up five. Uh, untap this and transform it into add X mana of any one color to your mana pool where X is your life total. What? I feel like I would have been getting the cards back. Somehow they're like, put all the cards exiled back in your hand. So in order to in order to, to flip this, I have to exile five separate cards on five separate turns. Um. Well, it's not a looter, though. You're not drawing... Oh, it is draw a card. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Whew. All right, that's not bad, then. Yeah, you just played a looter. Okay, seems good. Seems really good, actually. I, I almost missed the draw a card part. I'm like, you're just exiling a card, and then you hope that... triggered um okay yeah seems fine actually two mana you loot um i don't like that it costs mana loot but it, i mean that's the world we're living in now you're not gonna get, it's rare you're gonna find a merfolk looter card or a two mana card that lets you loot every single turn for free it seems fine um the fact that it does flip into something that could add like 15 to 20 mana is pretty huge um it, it can only add it to one color so you can't actually play um the big legendary dinosaur that we saw in the last one so i mean seems good i think it's fine um the, the best part about cards like this is that you it's it's when you have no um when when the front side without ever flipping it is good enough by itself right so azor's gateway i think is good enough by itself to be playing i don't think you have to ever flip it because it is draw a card then exile a card and then even if it does flip you get to gain five life which is kind of cute i mean i don't see why you're just gaining five random life out of nowhere when this card doesn't seem to have any life oh because you want to be able to uh you want to be able to obviously increase the number of mana that you're adding. So if you're at one life, which is the lowest you can possibly be at and still play this, unless you have like a platinum angel, you flip it and you can add six mana to your mana pool, which is pretty good. Yeah, this card seems strong. All right, cool. Captain Hook. Uh, I mean, Captain's Hook. Three mana equipped creature is plus two plus so has menace and is a pirate because they just love menace in this set. Pirates are clearly quite menacing. And it's a pirate in addition to its other types. When Captain's Hook becomes unattached from a permanent, destroy that permanent. Yeah, this is like your just classic. Uh, give a good buff for the price, which is one. Equip for one gets plus two, plus oh. And, um, you know, I mean, and you get Menace. And it dies. If, you, if, they were, if they end up naturalizing the Captain's Hook, they die. Which is weird because... I imagine you could remove a captain's hook from a pirate and they wouldn't die. 
Does Azorway's gateway check that it is the same one that exiled the card? Um, probably yes, because it would say whenever a card has a name, it references itself, not any Azor's gateway, right? So, um, so in this situation, it says if cards with five or more different card mana costs are exiled with this card, you gain five life, attack, untap this card and transform it. So I do think they are uh, self-referential. Yeah, Captain's Hook, probably not going to see playing Constructed. Three mana is way too expensive for this card. Like, you don't want to... You don't want to spend your turn three just playing a, a, an equipment that is nothing. Playing, spending turn four equipping it to something and then having that thing killed, or having the hook killed and then two for oneing yourself. So it just doesn't seem great. Gleaming barrier, O four for two defender. All right, when it dies, create a treasure. So uh, I don't see you ever playing this card. Golden guardian, four mana. This is a really weird card. Four mana for a four four defender. Golden Guardian fights another creature you control. When Golden Guardian dies this turn, return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. So you can actually have it block their 2-2 and then fight your 2-2. Um, which is unfortunate because your 2-2 would die and this guy would die. Um, that being the case, I assume most of the time this guy dies. The other creature is going to die as well unless you're fighting a 5-5 or a 6-6. Um which may be the case, but I mean, you're that's going to be pretty late in the game. Like you're going to play a five, five or six, six on turn five or six and then fight on turn like seven. So it's pretty late. Um, but I mean, what do we flip into? I actually don't know. Gold Forge Garrison. Again, add two mana of any one color to your mana pool. That's not bad. And four and a tap create a four, four colorless golem artifact creature. That's actually pretty good. I like the flip side of this a lot. Um, the problem is that like, yeah, it doesn't have to die in the fight. That's true. As long as you trigger, wait, no. Yeah, as long as you as long as you activate the ability, um, whenever it dies that turn, return it to the battlefield transform. So it could it could actually die. You could fight pre combat and then block something or whatever. I mean, it can't attack obviously, but yeah, this card seems interesting. I think the ability is powerful. It reminds me of something like Urza's Factory, which is sad because like that's a great, also not a legendary land worth noting. Um, it's a great. Ursus Factory was a great control finishing card. Like, you just put a couple in your deck and then eventually you just start making 2-2s two forever. Um, this seems like it kind of wants to do the same thing, but the problem is, like, it requires you to have other creatures in your deck. Um, I could see, like, playing Torrential Gearhulk end of turn 6, turn 7, just fighting this. Seems good. And then you just have to flip it, get another land. I think that's actually pretty reasonable. Or, like, even fight, like, Scarab God. Like, I think Scarab God and Torrential Gearhulk are two pretty reasonable things to fight. And worst case scenario, you play this on turn four, it doesn't attack, but it blocks tons of things as a 4-4-4-4. Four, 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 four. And if your opponent just kills it, then they wasted a removal spell. So, I don't know, not terrible. Unfortunately, it can't fight itself because it says fights another target creature you control. And if you have two of these guys, like, if you have this guy and another guy, and you activate them both, only one is going to flip because... Only one of the abilities is gonna re gonna resolve, right? Like, so if this guy resolves first, he's gonna fight the other guy, and this guy's trigger will resolve, so it will flip. But the other guy's trigger will still be on the stack, so it still only it still only resolves. You still only get to flip one, so you might as well just fight with something else. And Goldforge, like we said, like I think this is a pretty good this is a pretty good return on investment actually, because the two mana you pay to do it. So if I go Torrential Gear Hulk or, or Scarab God or whatever, and I pay two mana to fight. I get those two mana back when I flip this, which is pretty sweet. It does does it untap? I guess it doesn't matter because it's going to be untapped anyway. So, I like this card. I like this card more than I thought. I, I like this card more than I thought I would. Or as card relic, three mana, ascend. So city's city's blessing is relevant. Add a mana to your mana pool. So this is this is like the the gold standard in artifact mana now, where you pay three to get a a, a mana rock. Sacrifice it, you gain three life and draw a card if you have the city's blessing. This is fine. This seems like uh, mostly a limited card. I don't think you want to be paying three mana and constructed to add just a colorless mana. Um, the secondary part is good, but it, it actually doesn't do anything if you don't have the city's blessing. So, Silent Gravestone, another artif another graveyard hate card. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. So you can't reanimate things. You can't snap caster mage things. You can't. 
I mean, I think that's the extent of it, really. Uh, you can still cast flashback cards. Exile Silent Gravestone and all cards from all graveyards draw a card. Four mana is pretty expensive for this ability, but I like that it's there. And I also like that you get to draw a card off of it because that's pretty cool. Um, you also, yeah, so you can't cast things like Past in Flames. Oh, yeah, you can. You can't, yeah, you can. Does Past in Flames say target card in a graveyard? Let's look. Uh, no. Okay, so, yeah, you can still pass in flames and stuff. You can still buy back. You can still, uh, flashback stuff, so. You cannot Scarab God, though, right? So you can't actually target creatures, which is pretty great. This seems like some anti-Scarab God tech, actually. This is pretty nice, because, uh, you just can't target the creatures. Hmm. I like that. Yeah, that seems good. I'm, uh, I'm impressed with this card. One mana to shut down Scarab God shenanigans, which is pretty sweet. I mean, Scarab God will still come back if you kill it, but um, yeah, seems good. Yeah, unfortunately, Gift, uh, God Pharaoh's Gift doesn't target, uh, which is a super weird thing because if you if you exile, like if they, if they put the God Pharaoh's Gift trigger on the stack and you're like, all right, exile your, your best creature, they'll just choose something else. It doesn't, God Pharaoh's Gift doesn't target a creature. It just, you choose a creature in your graveyard to put to bring it back into play, unfortunately. So God Pharaoh's Gift actually uh, still works through a silent gravestone unless you exile the, the cards. So uh, really, really interesting um, caveat. See, again, that's another, as you mentioned in the last, in the previous video, in the previous uh, set review, like um, that's another, that's another extremely uh, nuanced distinction between choose and target. Whereas choose happens on resolution, target happens before the 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 effect resolves. Yeah, so Godfrey's gift. At the beginning of your combat, you may exile you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. You just you just choose one. It doesn't you don't you never target it, so. Yep, not bad, not bad. I, I like this card a lot. I think it's good. Strider harness. Oh, look at this little guy. He's got his little robo legs on. Three mana. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one in haste for for equip of one. I think this is better than the Captain Hook. Is Captain Hook rare? Oh, God. That's brutal. So this guy gets one less power, but one more toughness, and it also gets haste. I think this is just a better card at common. Is Strider Harness a reprint? Was this in Scars of Mirrodin? I think it was. Oh, there's a lot of striders. <laughs> uh, oh, it was in Oath of the Gatewatch. Oh, it was also in Scars of Mirrodin. Cool. I was, so I was right, and I was... Yeah, all right. So this is just a reprint. And the funny thing is, we didn't play it then, so I doubt we're going to play it now. It is Menace versus Haste, but it's also like your guy doesn't die, and one is trying to be constructed playable, being a rare, and this one's just not... This one is not pretentious. It has no reservations that it's a limited only common, and that's fine. The Immortal Sun. Oh, this card is such gas, dude. So six mana, it does everything. This is the opposite of Null Rod. It does everything, I guess. Players can't activate Planeswalkers abilities. Okay, that's strong. Uh, you just don't play with Planeswalkers and then you're in great shape. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Okay, we've already gone over that I love drawing an extra card at the beginning of my turn or whenever, like Staff of Nan, Phyrexian Arena, etc. Spells you cost, you cast cost one less to cast. Again, with the redundant cast. Spells cost you one less to cast. It seems like it would be just fine. I'm trying to figure out why that distinction is there. Like, if there is a fundamental difference between spells you cast cost one less to cast, which is just a ridiculous Dr. Seuss uh, word jumble, or spells cost you one less to cast. I cannot see the distinction there, but I'm sure it is because I, I trust Wizards of the Coast and I think, I think R&D knows what they're doing. Um, I'm just trying to figure out why the word cast is in there twice. And I can't for the life of me, so. And creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So this card does a little bit of everything. Shuts down all planeswalkers. Uh, you draw an extra card. Your spells are cheaper. Your creatures are bigger. This card's great. Um, in limited, good lord. Uh, enjoy your packs. Enjoy your victories. In constructed, uh, I actually feel... Right, but if... Okay, so you said someone in the chat said to specify you. And I said spells 
cost you one less to cast, it still it still specifies you, right? So, right, but I like and someone has said new new clarification, so it's clear to your opponents don't get get it. And like I said, like my my version would say spells cost you one less to cast. So the word you is in both of them. Like there's only the word you in one time in both of them. So I don't, it seems like it's still, it's clear enough, right? Spells cost you one less to cast. Spells you cast cost one less. I, I can see the distinction as being spells you cast. The spells that you cast, those are the specific spells that are getting less mana. Spells cost you one less to cast. I don't know. It seems it seems very very. Um, it's very subtle. Either way, it's very subtle. But I feel like there is there's got to be some kind of logical distinction there. Some subtle some subtle distinction there. Anyway, um, yeah, so this card seems great. Um, I don't know if there's constructed applications for it, but the fact that it, it can't activate Planeswalker, it's obviously an amazing commander card, right? But. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to see any constructed play other than Commander, but I mean, it could. It's got a lot of abilities and Staff of Ninsaw play. So, you know, be, the, the ability to draw a card, an extra card every single turn is really strong. Um, But, you know, that also let you ping things like either opponents or creatures, which is also very good. Whereas instead of pinging things, your creatures get more more power and toughness. You get to, your spells cost less and you can't activate Planeswalker's abilities. Also very strong, like that you're replacing one ability with three for another six mana, draw an extra card per turn. I don't know, we'll see. Could be good. Traveler's Amulet, we've seen this card a million times. Um, not exciting. Unfortunately, we're going to have to end the artifacts on this guy. Uh, sacrifice the Search Lighter for basic land, put it in your hand. Okay. Not exciting. Sometimes nice. Big deal. And Arch of Orazka. Now we're going to go through the lands. Lands are very, very limited. Uh, Arch of Orazka. Uh, add a mana to your mana pool. Draw a card. Activate this only for the city's blessing. I think this card's great. And you could definitely see two two of these in like a control deck. Especially because it's not rare. Or legendary, rather. Um, just putting this in a blue-black control deck as like a two of. You hit ten lands. And you're like, alright, got city's blessing. End of your turn. Draw a card for six. Still have counter spell up. Um... Super cool. Super, super efficient card. Drawing a card every single turn is amazing, especially in the late game. And uh, you obviously have 10 permanents out if you're doing this, so you have plenty of land. This card is sweet. And there's a lot of really, really fun cards for control decks in this set, I think. And um, I'm hoping we get to see some of them and that Scarab God slash Chupacabra is not um, just everything we feared. So, yeah, this card seems great. Evolving Wilds. Anybody? No? Okay. And the remaining five cards are a cycle uh, that we have seen before. We've also seen these, I believe, in Innistrad. Uh, let's check for a second. They were in they were in Amonkhet and Shadows over Innistrad. Uh, and funny, a funny thing, the Amonkhet ones, I believe, were only in, like, the Planeswalker decks or, like, the whatever, like, some one of the intro the intro decks or something. So it's weird because they had the Shadows Over Innistrad art um, with the Amonkhet set logo, which is super weird. But we have uh, Forsaken Wastes, Foul Orchard, Highland Lake, Stone Quarry, and Woodland Stream. So those are our, those are our dual lands for the set, which are not bad. I think they're all playable. A lot of these, a couple of these have seen seen play in, in Constructed. Um, like Stone Quarry has seen play in, in Standard. And so, like, I think Highland Lake was in the blue-red deck. And Forsaken Sanctuary was in the white-black deck. Because sometimes you just need, like, dual land 5 through 8, even if they come into play tapped, because you're playing, like, the two-color enemy color deck. So that's cool. Um, I, I don't think these lands are bad. I think we'll probably see better lands in Dominaria. Because obviously we will. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are still playable. And uh, they're not overpowered by any means. So it's nice that they exist. We'll see if they see any play. 
but yeah, that's 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 the Rivals of Ixalan set review for you guys. Um, we covered gold artifact or uh, artifact and land in this in this one, and uh, set looks pretty cool. I'm actually excited to play it and construct it. I think there's a lot of cards that could change construct it. They can improve a lot of archetypes that exist, like Merfolk and Pirates, and hopefully come Monday, um, which will have been which will be before this review goes up. Actually, um, we will see a change with the with the energy decks. So, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, this is the first time I've done this, so I'll probably do another one for Dominaria because it was actually super, super fun. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you guys are watching on YouTube. And uh, head on over to Twitch if you guys haven't done so, or vice versa. And uh, give me a follow there. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.